Hey everyone, Eric here. In this video, we're going to look at a home purchase price calculator that I built, and you can download below, that will help us estimate what is a fair price to pay for a home based on the rent it can generate, the surrounding market, as well as comparing it to other asset classes like stocks and bonds. Okay, let's get started. So, in order to create a first estimate of what is sort of a reasonable range of what we should be paying for a house, you need two pieces of information. First off, you know, we assume that we're looking at an individual property. You need to estimate what the annual rent would be for, let's say, this house. So it doesn't matter if you're gonna live in the house or you're gonna use it as an investment property and rent it out. You should always evaluate the price as an investment as if you're going to rent it. So let's say we're looking at the market of Reno, Nevada, and we know that houses with a similar amount of bedrooms that are similar size in the exact same street are renting for $21.50 a month. So first we need to put into our calculator $21.50 times 12 months, and that gives us an annual rent of $25,800. You'll see that I've increased the rent 2.5% a year, and I've uh, built this model all the way out to be a 30-year model. So you can see 30 years out, the rent is like $53,000. Okay, the second piece of information we need, which is publicly available, is the cap rate. So here's what the cap rate is. The cap rate is the rent of the property minus the operating expenses, things like property management, insurance, all this stuff. And so that's the income that you would make as the owner of this property, excluding the mortgage, just the income that the property generates, divided by the price. So let's say the property generates $5,000 and you, you know, after all of its expenses and you paid $100,000, the cap rate would be 5 divided by 100, so that would be 5%. So let's look at the Reno, Nevada market and see if we can find some publicly available cap rates so we can put that in and figure out what is a reasonable price for the house. Okay, so Reno, Nevada, Nevada cap rates, class A real estate. Okay, so we can see here that um, you know, we're seeing, okay, class A real estate or class double A real estate is 5.15% cap rates. So you're obviously going to want to confirm this data, like do a lot of research, ask realtors and figure out what houses in the neighborhood have been selling for in terms of cap rates. But this is going to help you to, to figure out what is sort of the value of the house relative to similar houses in the neighborhood. Okay, so we know that the cap rate is 5.15%. So with these two pieces of information you collect about a property that you're looking at, you can figure out an estimated value for the house. So how are we calculating this? We're taking the rent, $25,800, and multiplying it by one minus the operating expenses. We put in operating expenses as 40% of rent, Typically, you're going to see 30 to 40%, probably 40 if you're using a property manager. So 60% of that rent will be left over as our income. Then we're taking that 60% and we're dividing it by the cap rate. Doing that calculation gives us a sort of a maximum price or an implied value of $300,583. So you can compare this to what the house is listed for or you know figure out what offer you want to make and see okay is this house reasonably priced this is a great starting point if you like this content please like this video and subscribe to my channel it would really help me out and I'll keep making content like this and again if you want you can download this template for free off my blog in the description below and use it for your own calculations so I would encourage any person at this step to compare real estate as an investment to other asset classes. The main other asset classes that people invest in are stocks and bonds. There's obviously other ones, but mainly real estate, stocks, and bonds. So I prepared a little bit of information so you can sort of compare the value of different asset classes. So we know that Reno, Nevada has a cap rate for the type of real estate that we're buying of 5.2%. So that's like the yield on our investment. 
is 5.2%. In stocks, the typical valuation metric is a price to earnings ratio. It's the price of the stock divided by the net earnings of the company. So right now in the stock market, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so it's sort of hard to even know what the price to earnings ratio is because companies are reporting price to earnings, you know, they're reporting earnings all over the place. But some of the estimates that we're seeing are about 30 times. So every $1 of earnings a company makes, people are paying $30 to 30 times that dollar of earnings to own the company. And then bonds, like high quality corporate bonds, reliable companies that um, you lend money to and then they pay you back and they pay you a yield, they're yielding about 1.5%. And this is a really low number relative to historical standards. So how do we compare 5.2, 30, and 1.5? Well, this is actually really, really interesting. We can convert each of these into a similar metric to compare it. So we're going to convert them all into price to earnings ratios. So this is very simple. You just take one and you divide it by the cap rate, which is the same as the yield, and you get um, 19. So for every uh, $1 of earnings that the property makes for, for the owner, um, the typical person is paying $19, uh, 19 times earnings to own real estate. With stocks, it's just 30 times earnings. And with bonds, if we do the same calculation, one divided by 1.5, people are paying 67 times the yield to own a bond. And the fascinating thing about these three ratios is that if you look over long periods of time, they, um, the average has typically been around 17 for all three of these asset classes. So if you see that these asset classes are very mispriced sort of relative to each other, that's an opportunity. So bonds are absurdly expensive relative to historical levels. Stocks are very expensive relative to historical levels. And real estate is priced a little higher than historical levels. But relative to stocks and bonds, real estate is by far the cheapest in this situation. So depending on the moment when you watch this video and do your own analysis, it could be that stocks are the cheapest or bonds are the cheapest. But you want to look at these three to figure out like, you know, where should I be hunting for deals? Is real estate a good space to do it? And in this situation, if you need to deploy some capital, I would say real estate is a good place to be hunting. Okay, so we have this $300,000 uh, as an estimated maximum price of the property, but now um, we should dive in and calculate the real costs and income of the property. We have an estimated rent, but you could go and reach out to companies and figure out what would be the actual property management fee? What actually would be the property taxes in this neighborhood, insurance, you know, home upgrades, et cetera. And you should crunch those numbers for yourself. And I'm just gonna show some example numbers here of averages um, that I'm just estimating that are sort of averages across the US. So in the US, um, if you pay a property management company, they generally take 10% of your rent. Property taxes, an average could be like 1% of the home value. This can be much higher and much lower depending on the city and the state, but 1% for this example is fine. Insurance, um, half a percent of the value of the property is a reasonable estimate, and home improvements, which is CapEx, as 0.4% of the property. Next, we want to put something in for vacancy just to make sure that you know as, rent, as tenants change over time, um, we, we're covered in 5% is, is typically a pretty reasonable estimate. And of course, we're going to be buying this property with a loan. So I've done some calculations here. Um, anything in blue in this model, you can change. And it's a calculator, so it'll just basically update itself. So I've estimated we're putting 20% down. You could put 10 and it would update. But I'm saying 20% because that's a very typical number. And that calculates for us the amount of equity, the down payment, and the amount of debt based on our price that we calculated above. I also put in an interest rate of 3.5%, which is right now in 2020 kind of what we're seeing um, in the market, and the term of 30 years, which is typical. And so here down below, I use the payment formula. So um, this is a Excel formula that will calculate your monthly mortgage payment, basically, or like an amortized loan. And so it's looking at the term, which is 30 years. It's looking at the monthly interest rate, which is just 3.5 divided by 12. 
um, and also the amount of the mortgage, and it spits out the monthly mortgage payment for us, which would be $1,072. And annualized, it is $12,869. So now down below, we are gonna calculate what is the actual operating income that we would make off this property as the owner. Because with that information, we can get an even more exact price that, that, that we feel comfortable about if we're going to try to buy this property. So we know the baseline rent from up above is $25,800. Vacancy, we're assuming, is 5% of rent. So again, this, the model calculates all this information for us. You can see the, the rent times the 5%. Then you see property management, which is the 10% times the rent property Taxes, again, this is pulling in the, the, the property value from up above and multiplying it by 1%. Same with insurance, same with CapEx. So we're estimating total expenses of $9,581. Again, you want to collect the real information on your property, but for this, for this example, you know, this is, this is perfect. And this would leave us with the rent minus the expenses of $16,219. So... This leaves us at a 63% operating margin. So our income, and remember above, we said 40% of rent would go to expenses. So in this case, it's 37%. So it's a little better than our initial estimates. So, but it just shows that our initial estimates were, were very close and that were reasonable. So given that we now have a good estimate for our income on the property, we can, um, get an even more exact value by just taking this income and dividing it by the cap rate. This gives us sort of, you know, that 19 times income that we calculated on the asset class comparison page. Well, we're doing that same thing. We're dividing the income by the 5.15%. And here you can see 314 uh, or $315,000, which is pretty close to our initial estimate of 300,000. So we know this is sort of um, a good range to be in. Now, this from this sixteen thousand, um, we need to pay our mortgage, assuming that we um, purchased basically eighty percent of the property with debt. So when we do that, we take the sixteen thousand, we subtract thirteen thousand, and the cash flow of the property is three thousand three hundred and fifty dollars a month. So sorry, a year. So per month, it's only like what two hundred bucks, um, three hundred bucks a month. But if we look at our cash on cash returns, it's a really typical metric in real estate. You say, okay, how much cash did I actually make? $3,350. And how much actual cash did I put in? I put in 60 grand of cash. So the return is 5.6% cash on cash returns. And over time, the cash flow should increase as we increase rents, you know, gradually. And there's also an increase in value over time. So here I'm sort of calculating, you know, what we estimate the value to be increasing by over time. And you can see that um, the, the cumulative over time between the, the cash flow and the value increase, we expect to be making, you know, over long periods of time, you know, larger increases in, in value and cash. Here's an interesting point I just want to highlight. Um, if you bought the property with 100% cash, meaning like no mortgage, um, and you just said, okay, you know, this property produced $3,755 of cash flow and it increased $8,000 in value, you see that the returns are actually really, really low, 3 4%. But this is only if you bought the property 100% cash. When you have the ability to take out a mortgage, it... Um, it increases the returns massively. So the key to real estate is debt, which is much different than other asset classes like stocks and bonds, which you typically do not buy with debt. You would just be buying with cash. Okay, so finally at the bottom, we look at our sort of overall cash on cash returns. I look at the increases in value and the, uh, sort of um, the cash flow over time. And this is really interesting. If we go out 30 years, you see that we put in 60,000 and we actually end up making 655,000. So we make uh, 11 times our money. And you might be thinking, wow, this is incredible. The only thing we should be investing in is real estate. Well, that's actually not the case. So let's compare it with stocks. 
So if I put in $60,000 into the stock market and I made an 8% return for 30 years, um, let's just calculate what how much money I would make. So 60,000 times one plus the 8% return to the value of 30 years. And 8% is like a, you know, a return that is pretty common in the stock market. You actually also make 10 times your money, but you don't have to manage the property. Um, it's completely hands off if you put it in an index fund and you still make the same amount of money. So I bring this up to say that, you know, you always should compare asset classes. Think about what is this asset class going to do for me? How is my money going to work for me? And, you know, how should I be investing it over time, conscious of the overall panorama of the investing environment? Okay, so um, and the last piece is of this $655,000, um, don't forget about taxes. If you ever sell this, you're going to have to pay a bunch of this gain in taxes and also the time value of money. You know, $1 30 years from now is worth a lot less or will be worth a lot less than $1 today. So um, we need to think about that in terms of the net present value. So now you should have an understanding of how to think about and calculate what is a fair value to pay for a property. Again, feel free to download this template below if you want to play around with it. And I've also linked to some of my other finance focus videos as well. If you found this content valuable, please subscribe and click the alert notification. Like this video, comment, send it to your grandma, anything you can do to help. I really appreciate it. And also check out my online courses if you want to improve your Excel and finance skills. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.